Okay, I'm back uh, to look at this book. The last couple videos were pretty popular, so let's look at another chapter or another section in college physics. Kimball, this is I think it's author Kimball. Um, what's it? Fourth edition. And just so you can see, uh, author Kimball. I do want to point out one thing. This says. Uh, 1935. Okay. Now, let me move this. So, if you look back here to the preface, the very first one, in offering this work to my fellow teachers, um, the book was undertaken some years ago when the writer felt that the want of a textbook adapted to the needs of students taking the general first year course in college. Uh, so, what may be called the physical rather than the mathematical method has been preferred in giving definitions and explanations because I believe the ideas presented are more easily grasped and more tenacious, ten, like, tenaciously held when the mind forms for itself some sort of some a sort of picture of the conditions instead of merely associating them with the symbols of a formula. So, the the author wants to kind of this is this is your concept. I think this would be your conceptual physics book, right? It's like, well, let's not worry about the math so much. Um, but I, but I think that that they've they've gone too far, right? If there's some things where, if you don't want to get into the math, then you you really can't just talk about it in words. Well, let's just see. Okay, so I was looking through the table of contents and this rotation of rigid objects. I just did this in my classical mechanics class. So let's look at that page 95. Oh wait, I already have it bookmarked. Okay. So let's look at the rotation of rigid objects. Um, one, The first thing they talk about here is that any motion of a rigid object may be considered as made up of the motion of its center of mass combined with the rotation about an axis through that center. That's pretty good. I like that. Uh, motion of the center of mass external forces as though they were acting at a point I think it talked about. Okay, this is it. Look at this. They talk about the example of a top, a spinning top. When a top spins on a smooth frictionless table, its center of gravity, well they did here, it's center motion of the center mass. So this says that the motion moves just as though the whole mass of the body were con concentrated at that point and all the forces were applied directly to it and it makes no difference at what points on the body the forces may be applied. When a top spins on a smooth frictionless table, that one really got me because I'm thinking about a wobbling top right away. I mean, I guess if the top's completely stable, this would be okay. Uh, its center of gravity remains at rest if it's not wobbling, which I think most tops wobble, but for external forces acting on the top are its weight due to the traction between it and the earth. That's really good. And the uh, <laughs> and the upward pressure of the table at its point. So, I mean, I have to look. Let's just see if it talks about pressure. Because we they want to use pressure as the normal force. But we use pressure and force as different. Kinetics of a particle. Um liquids and gases pressure so they do they must define pressure okay i missed my spot 95 there it is okay so that's kind of strange they would say that these two forces are equal and opposite and consequently the center of gravity has no translational acceleration even when the top is inclined as in figure 75 page 109 well, that's pretty far ahead see this is where a modern textbook just say oh it's a sidebar that's weird. Because if this is the top spinning around obviously at an angle like that, the center of gravity is accelerating, right? Because if, if let's say the center of gravity is right here and the top is spinning around this way, then there's a circular acceleration at the very least because the center of gravity is moving in a circle in the wobble part. So maybe they just didn't want to redraw a picture of this same thing, but it's vertical. When a stick of wood is hurled through the air, its center of mass moves in a simple parabolic curve. Okay, that's good. 
see. Besides the translational force, which depends upon the amounts and directions of several forces, and so found by the simple force polygon. Oh. Simple. I think the simple force polygon, I suspect if I look back, this is um, their way of doing a graphical addition of forces. So let's just, if I have uh, three forces and the, or four forces and those forces add up to zero, so it's an equilibrium, and you could do this. And that's a polygon, the force polygon. I'm just guessing, I'm not sure. That's just my guess. I'm gonna put my cap on because I don't want to write on it. There is usually also a couple which causes the body to rotate about an axis through its center of mass. A couple. This couple depends not only on the mounts and direction of the forces, but okay, so I think they're calling a couple a torque. Is there an index back here? Okay, let's see. Let's just look up and see if they have torque in here. Torque, 35. Hmm. Torque. Do they talk about couples here? Oh, here. A couple can be... Oh, okay, there. Such a combination is known as... Hence, there's a combination of forces that does not tend to... Okay, so a couple is, I guess, are two torques that add up to zero. Okay. This couple does not only... Depends not only on the mounts and the direction of the forces, but also upon the points of action. Okay. Hmm, I think they mean torque there. I think that should be torque. Uh, angular velocity. Um, radians per second. Okay, that's good. Angular velocity represented by omega. I didn't even write it out. You know, this is this is something that I, I do poorly. Uh, we use the Greek letter omega. It looks like a W. And, and a lot of students, especially if they're new to physics, they don't know that. They don't know the Greek letters, okay? We, we use them f so much for so long that we kind of just, they become second nature to us. But they're not second nature to students. Um, so here, since the length of the radius, okay, V equals omega R, that's cool. V is a linear velocity in R, is, okay? They give an example. Angular acceleration. When the angular acceler velocity of a body is changing, the rate of velocity, of, the rate of change per second is known the rate of change of the velo angular velocity is the angular acceleration, alpha. Okay, it's, again, we use the same symbol. Now look, right here they said omega, the Greek letter omega. Here they say alpha, and it's, oh, you know that. You already know that one. The angular velocity omega one changes omega two in t seconds. Here I would definitely put, here they say alpha equals omega two minus omega one over t. I would definitely put delta t. You're using a change in, in an angular velocity, and you say it's a rate. So I think it's important to put a delta here. This promotes the idea of acceleration is velocity over time, which it's not. Uh, and then they solve for omega-2. That's pretty good. Uh, also, they're not, I think they do treat it as a vector. Okay. The direction of the axis of rotation may change, and this also is, constitutes an angular acceleration. Okay, good. Even though the speed of rotation may be constant. Motion of a spinning top when its axis is, in, is inclined. Okay. Vec here we go. It's right here. Vector representation of angular velocity. Vector may be represented by a vector or arrow drawn along the axis of rotation, okay, having a length proportional to the amount of the angular velocity. So again, they're taught, we don't really talk about how long you that vector is, because we just give a numerical value for it. But since it's conceptual, I guess since it's a conceptual book, uh, that that they just gonna, they're just going to talk about drawing it. So that's why I would have a length, I guess. Um, then they say, pointing in the direction that a person must be looking along the axis to see the body rotating in a clockwise direction. So the right-hand rule, let's see, so if I do right-hand rule, if I'm looking this way in the axis, that would be clock, yeah, okay change in direction of angular velocity. So this is this is good, right? If I think they're trying to say the axial rotation changing 
the angular velocity at one instant might be represented by the vector b and a short time later by c why not a and b okay b to c and so d is alpha t okay uh yeah that works yeah because that, that agrees with this over here um, again i would put delta t rotation with constant acceleration um the, here we get to the kinematic equations for the uh and they, this is this is really fun because this is something that we see in uh, modern textbooks, right? We say, oh look, the kinematic equations. We have rotational equivalents of the kinematic equations, and we map them up. I, I do this exact same thing, uh, and that's that's fun. Let's see, skip the page, fold it over. Okay, and then they get some problems. Let's just look at the problems. I'm not going to solve them. Uh, if a wheel re revolves uh, 1,800 times per minute, what's the angular velocity? Okay, and then what's the velocity of a point? If it's a six-inch diameter, fine. Uh, and see, this is that's not really a conceptual question, right? He he said he didn't want to use mathematical representations, but you have to. Uh, linear velocity of a point one foot. Okay, same question right there. Angular velocity again. Okay, again, the one through four are all the same thing. They're saying uh, omega uh, v equals omega times r. Okay, a wheel is given the speed of 100 revolutions per minute. In two minutes, it's angular acceleration in radian. Okay, so this is uh, a, just the definition of angular acceleration. Uh, how many revolutions? This is the kinematic equation one where you would use something like, like this. You notice also theta equals... Omega, actually, this is funny. Both of these, I just realized in equation two, they say theta equals omega 1t plus 1 half alpha t squared. That's fine. But they didn't, normally I would say theta equals theta zero. And same for this. I guess they're talking about s is the distance, displacement, and the angle through which. Okay. I mean, I guess it's, it's, not, it's not really wrong. It's just I wouldn't do it that way. Okay, let's see. Here's angular acceleration called by torque. Um, that's an interesting diagram. F1, what's going on here? Okay, let me see how far they do to, this is interesting. Angular momentum L, moment of inertia. Angular momentum. This is all the same stuff. Oh, wait. Angular momentum is I alpha. That should be I omega. That's not right. Okay, wait. Where did they introduce L? The symbol I is a moment of inertia. Angular acceleration caused by a given torque. Okay, I guess we're using L for the torque. The torque or the sum of the moments may be reacting on force. Oh yeah, they're whoa. They're using torque for L. That's if that's true, torque is L, that's fine. Uh, then this works. But we don't use we use L for angular momentum. What does he use for angular momentum? Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he just re represents it in terms of I times omega. Okay. Well cool. Uh, rotational kinetic energy, one half i omega. Um, calculate. Some, see, now you're calculating moments of inertia of a rod. What's he do here? For a straight uniform rod, we would normally do this by uh, integrating. Conceive it to be divided in n equals parts. Then the length of the part will be l over n, and the distance is that. So they do this numerically as a sum. If n take, is taken more closely, does the sum parenthesis? I guess he just does it kind of plausibly as you'd break it into more and more pieces. It's interesting. And then he gives some formulas. Okay. I think we'll stop there. Let me know if you want more of these videos on this thing. Uh, 
I, I'm, I'm happy to read through this because I love this book. Uh, if there's some particular section you want me to look at in particular, just comment down below. Uh, I'll probably revisit this when I have more time just because I like it. I'll put my bookmark right there. Uh, but there you go. I'll, I'll put my other two videos of this all in a playlist, and this will all be in the same playlist. If you want to watch the other two videos, uh, that's where they'll be. Later.